is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Good to see you. I'm Alex Bennett. This is The Ramble going on from now until uh, midnight Eastern time uh, here in the United States of America, uh, a country which is reviled all around the world at the present time. Uh, But I wish we could do something about it. But unfortunately, a bunch of idiots in this country voted a guy president who is turning it into uh, a uh, trailer camp. Anyway. Uh, Here we are, and I'm going to be playing something in a few minutes, and if we have trouble with it, if all of a sudden it goes off, uh, that's because Facebook decided I couldn't play it. But I think I can play it because earlier tonight as a test, I ran it on Facebook Live, and they didn't stop me, and I did the same thing over at uh, YouTube, and where before they stopped me on something else, they didn't stop me on this, okay? So it should play okay, and I want it to play okay, because it's important, because it's something that uh, is so sad uh, that it, it actually somewhat made me cry when I was watching it. Now, some of you may have seen it on the news. Some of you may have seen it live. Some of you may have um, uh, just heard it on the radio somewhere. Uh, I want to play most of it. I'm not going to play the whole thing, I don't think. I'm going to make that judgment as we go along. And hope, of course, that Facebook doesn't pull the plug on us. And they shouldn't pull the plug because this is a meeting of Congress which is in public domain. But far be it from the people at Facebook to know the difference. And I'm not a Russian trying propaganda, so you know you got no reason to take me off. So let's hope it plays. As you know, today... Um, Al Franken um, announced his retirement from the United States uh, Senate. And he did that in the, in the face of allegations by numerous women that he had done stuff. Uh, most of these were from anonymous people and unsubstantiated. And the most recent one, uh, he said, never happened. Categorically, he could say never happened, and it is a complete fabrication. And yet, He's quitting because he feels that in the light of all this uh, hysteria that's going on in Washington um, uh, over over, uh, harassment and so on, that he doesn't want to detract from the job that needs to be done by a senator from the state of Minnesota by going through a series of Senate hearings and stuff, which he said he'd be happy to do. He thinks uh, it will prove everything uh, just right. Listen, I've never been a big fan of, uh, of, of Al Franken. And I said it, it's personal because he used to beat the pants off me at pinball. We used to go down to this bar in the village every now and then, and they had a great pinball machine. I can't remember which one it was now, but uh, it was a great pinball machine. And one which I, what happens is if you play pinball, uh, you, uh, uh, you go to a machine and you start playing it. You get to know that machine. That's what I loved about Fit Pinball. It wasn't digital. It worked purely on f- product properties of physics, all right? The ball, the angle, the, you know, the bouncing off of something, bouncing off of that, and so on. And so I got to really know this machine pretty well, and, and I, I used to play it a lot along with some other friends of mine. And in one night walks Al Franken, who at that time was on Saturday Night Live. And he said, you mind if I play with you? And I'm fine, go ahead. He was so fucking good at pinball. He just, he just waxed my ass. And, uh, of course, I wasn't the world's greatest pinball player, but I had, I had kind of nuanced this machine and done pretty well with it. And he was just, bing, bada, bada, bada. I, will you stop uh, going like that? Will you let somebody else use the pinball machine now? He was terrific. So I've hated him ever since, Okay. Uh, I disliked him when he went to um, Air America, which was a um, uh, a uh, radio network that was ill-conceived, and uh, they, you know, never asked me to go to work for them. Uh, 
this was at a time when I was still looking for work, right? Uh, and uh, they wouldn't, uh, they didn't, they didn't hire me. But they hired Al Franken, and they made a big deal out of it because he was Al Franken. Uh, and he didn't, he didn't really do a good radio show. He wasn't a great radio guy. Uh, there's something about radio. It, 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 there's a special quality about radio that you either are or you aren't a radio guy. Okay? And he wasn't a radio guy. Um, so anyway, I, um, um, so I've never been a big fan of Al Franken. And when he decided he was going to run for the Senate, I went, well, you know, this is going to be here. Here we go. Another one of these people. Minnesota loves to, high, you know, to, to have its, uh, its uh, uh, you know, uh, media stars become either governor or senators, right? Because you had the, the wrestler uh, there for a while as the governor. Uh, so, uh, uh, you know, anyway, um, be that as it may, I, I did not have great hopes for him as a senator. And as it has gone, he has turned out to be one hell of a great senator. He has turned out to be the most pro I don't like the word progressive, so let me not use that. Leftist voice in the Senate. Uh, always on the right side of every issue and never grandstanding about them. And I really, I really like the guy. So it was with great sadness today that I turned on my television set about a couple of minutes before noon, and it was just happenstance that I turned it on at that particular time. And I was faced with this. Mr. President. Senator from Minnesota. Thank you, Mr. President. A couple months ago, I felt that we had entered an important moment in the history of this country. We were finally beginning to listen to women about the ways in which men's actions affect them. The moment was long overdue. I was excited for that conversation and hopeful that it would result in real change that made life better for women all across the country and in every part of our society. Then the conversation turned to me. Over the last few weeks, a number of women have come forward to talk about how they felt my actions had affected them. I was, I was shocked, I was upset. But in responding to their claims, I also wanted to be respectful of that broader conversation because all women deserve to be heard and their experiences taken seriously. I think that was the right thing to do. I also think it gave some people the false impression that I was admitting to doing things that, in fact, I haven't done. Some of the allegations against me are simply not true. Others I remember very differently. I said at the outset that the Ethics Committee was the right venue for these allegations to be heard and investigated and evaluated on their merits, that I was prepared to cooperate fully and that I was confident in the outcome. You know, an important part of the conversation we've been having the last few months has been about how men abuse their power and privilege to hurt women. I am proud that during my time in the Senate, I have used my power to be a champion of women and that I've earned a reputation as someone who respects the women I work alongside every day. I know there's been a very different picture of me painted over the last few weeks, but I know who I really am. Serving in the United States Senate has been the great honor of my life. I know in my heart that nothing I have done as a senator, nothing, has brought this honor on, on this institution. And I am confident that the Ethics Committee would agree. Nevertheless, today I am announcing that in the coming weeks, I will be resigning as a member of the United States Senate. 
I, of all people, am aware that there is some irony in the fact that I am leaving while a man who has bragged on tape about his history of sexual assault sits in the Oval Office, and a man who has repeatedly preyed on young girls' campaigns for the Senate with the, with the full support of his party. But this decision is not about me. It's about the people of Minnesota. And it's become clear that I can't both pursue the Ethics Committee process and at the same time remain an effective senator for them. Let me be clear. I may be resigning my seat, but I am not giving up my voice. I will continue to stand up for the things I believe in as a citizen and as an activist. But Minnesotans deserve a senator who can focus with all her energy on addressing the challenges they face every day. There is a big part of me that will always regret having to walk away from this job with so much work left to be done. But I have faith that the work will continue because I have faith in the people who have helped me do it. I have faith in the dedicated, funny, selfless, brilliant young men and women on my staff. They have so much more to contribute to our country. And I hope that, as disappointed as they may feel today, everyone who has worked for me knows how much I admire and respect them. I have faith in my colleagues, especially my senior senator, Amy Klobuchar. I would not have been able to do this job without her guidance and wisdom. And I have faith, or at least hope, that members of this Senate will find the political courage necessary to keep asking the tough questions, hold this administration accountable, and stand up for the truth. I have faith in the activists who organized to help me win my first campaign and who have kept on organizing to help fight for the people who needed us, kids facing bullying, seniors worried about the price of prescription drugs, Native Americans who have been overlooked for far too long, working people who have been taking it on the chin for a generation, everyone in the middle class and everyone aspiring to join it. I have faith in the proud legacy of progressive advocacy that I have had the privilege to be a part of. I think I've probably repeated these words 10,000 times over the years. Paul Wellstone's famous quote, the future belongs to those who are passionate and work hard. It's still true. It will always be true. And most of all, I have faith in Minnesota. A big part of this job is going around the state and listening to what people need from Washington. But more often than not, when I'm home, I am blown away by how much Minnesota has to offer the entire country and the entire world. The people I've had the honor of representing are brilliant and creative and hardworking, and whoever holds this seat next will inherit the challenge I've enjoyed for the last eight and a half years, being as good as the people you serve. This has been a tough few weeks for me, but I am a very, very lucky man. I have a beautiful, healthy family that I love and that loves me very much. I'm going to be just fine. I'd just like to end with, with one last thing. I did not grow up wanting to be a politician. 
I came to this relatively late in life. I had to learn a lot on the fly. It wasn't easy and it wasn't always fun. And I'm not just talking about today. This is a hard thing to do with your life. There are a lot of long hours and late nights and hard lessons. And there is no guarantee that all your work and sacrifice will ever pay off. I won my first election by 312 votes. Could have easily gone the other way. And even when you win, progress is far from inevitable. Paul Wellstone spent his whole life working for mental health parity and it didn't pass until six years after Paul died. This year, a lot of people who didn't grow up imagining that they'd ever get involved in politics have done just that. They've gone to their first protest march or made their first call to a member of Congress or maybe even taken the leap and put their names on a ballot for the first time. It can be such a rush to look around a room of full of people ready to fight alongside you, to feel that energy, to imagine that better things are possible. But you too will experience setbacks and defeats and disappointments. There will be days when you will wonder whether it's worth it. What I want you to know is that even today, even on the worst day of my political life, I feel like it's all been worth it. Politics, Paul Wellstone told us, is about the improvement of people's lives. I know that the work I've been able to do has improved people's lives. I would do it all over again in a heartbeat. For a decade now, every time I would get tired or discouraged or frustrated, I would think about the people I was doing this for and would get me back up on my feet. I know the same will be true for everyone who decides to pursue a politics that is about improving people's lives. And I hope you know that I will be fighting alongside you every step of the way. With that, Mr. President, I yield the floor. That's, uh, th that was hard to watch. Uh, th it was one of the more impassioned speeches I've seen people give. And it was from a man who really, I think, turned into a pretty damn good politician. Uh, I am just, just angered in many ways by this lynch mob in Washington that for political expediency forced him to make this decision. And among them were people that I formally had respect for. Leading the charge of all people is Kirsten Gillibrand. She is the senator from New York. Uh, she in the past has gotten my vote. I now have what I call in a letter I wrote her, buyer's remorse. Uh, I don't think she has handled this well. I think she has handled it with political expediency, but not with political justice. And so I wrote her this uh, email. I went to her site, and they have a place where you can make a comment. And I wrote, shame on you for your stance regarding Senator Franken. As opposed to you, who is simply a liberal, you have silenced an ardent voice of the true left. You've made your decision based on innuendo and not facts. You did it to impress your perceived constituency rather than to be fair. You have wronged a person absent any kind of factual information. 
I used to be a supporter of yours, but now I have buyer's remorse, and I will never vote for you again. I know that doesn't mean much to you. I'm just one vote. But what should, what should that mean to you? Is that it, it, when, Let me try and read this right. But what should mean something to you is that you have betrayed the American ideal of fairness. Shame, shame, shame. And I signed it, Alex Bennett. Um, that was one letter I wrote. Uh, I wrote another one to uh, Chuck Schumer. Uh, and it was pretty much the same letter, only I didn't say that I've always been a fan of his and that I, you know, uh, but I did say I voted for him and that I now have buyer's remorse like I did in that letter. I saw no reason to not send the similar letter, okay, to these two people. But then there was a third party that I had to write to, and that was one of this, what I call lynch mob, and it was Bernie Sanders. You know, Nothing has disappointed me. The only thing that's disappointed me more than having, uh, losing uh, 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 Al Franken in the Senate, the only thing that has made me more depressed is that Bernie Sanders joined this fray. And so I wrote to him and I said, as someone who voted for you in the I, I, as a person who voted for you in the primary, as a big fan of your guts to fight for socialistic ideals and to hold truth to power, I'm sadly disappointed in you joining the pack of wolves that piled on Senator Al Franken based on innuendo. He has denied most of the allegations, and in the initial one, not only did he apologize, but she, an ardent right-winger and birther, forgave him. How many of those accusers were out to blunt a true leftist? You didn't take time to check. You should have been ashamed. You should be ashamed of yourself uh, for unfairly asking someone who is closer to your politics than anyone else in the Senate to resign. I had faith in you, and now that faith has, has turned into, and I use the term again, buyer's remorse, and again, shame, shame, shame. It's hard for me to read this because uh, it's single spaced, and I should have double spaced it, and then I could read it better. So, that, of course, you, you, you're going to get a reply, and you're going to get robo-replies from Bernie Sanders. I got, thank you for the time to fill out my web form and share your thoughts. This notice to let you know your message has been received. Not read, just received. For more information about issues I'm working on in Congress, blah, 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 please visit the website, blah, blah, blah. Thank you for contacting my audience. Please do not respond to this email address. <laughs> That was a reply from Bernie. The reply from uh, Gillibrand's office, again, another robo-reply, was a little bit nicer. It says, thank you for contacting my office. This is the way they should be written. Thank you for contacting my office. Your thoughts and concerns are very important to me, and you will receive a more detailed response shortly. I sincerely appreciate your patience in waiting for this response, as our ma mail volume is often significant. If uh, this is a request for assistance, blah, 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 blah. Thank you again for contacting my audience, Kristen Gillibrand. Let's see if I get a reply to that one, okay? Uh, uh, what did I get from Chuck Schumer? He, I don't think he has robo-mail. <laughs> he didn't reply at all. Nothing. Zero, zilch. But I expect that out of Chuck Schumer, who's a fucking whore. Uh, you know, it just absolutely disappoints me. And I'll tell you why it disappoints me, because it, it, it proves, once again, what I've said for the longest time, that the Democrats are losers. Uh, they shoot themselves in the foot. Here they've got a senator whose credentials at being a Democrat are without... Uh, there's very few people who can compare to him in his ardency of being to the left, all right? All these other people are liberals. Kirsten Gillibrand's a liberal. Chuck Schumer is a whatever does good for me. You know, I used to have a big joke here uh, on my radio show at Sirius in which I uh, would come in on Monday and say, well, yesterday was Sunday, and if it's Sunday, it must be Chuck Schumer because Chuck Schumer realizes that Sunday is the best time to hold a press conference because nobody else is, because it's the day of rest for most Christians, and he's already had his Sabbath. So if he does something on Sunday, it'll wind up on the news. 
and uh, he's always been that kind of whore. So I, you know, I expect that out of Schumer. But you know, I this this and Kirsten Gillibrand started this whole thing. She was the leader of this lynch mob, and I it just disappoints me because I've had such hope in her as a politician, and uh, you know I've I've seen that her heart is in the right place. But it's the Democrats shooting themselves in the foot. Now, you know, there were a lot of other ways of handling this, not the least of which is to hold that hearing, okay, and let him show what he's got and let him tell his side of the story. That would have been fair. Uh, it would have also been good if they had said, well, we as a group are reproaching him, but we're not asking him to leave at this time. Let's see how the hearing turns out, you know? Uh, but no, they had to do, and here's why they did it. You know, if at any other time this had happened, uh, under any other circumstances, uh, he'd still be, be, be in the Senate. What got rid of him was the fact that the Democrats had to counter Roy Moore. That's it, plain and simple, because how are we going to sit here and call Roy Moore a, a sexist and a pedophile and everything else if we've got these guys in our midst. And so really, Al Franken was a sacrificial lamb because we, when you think about what Al Franken supposedly did, and by most of, of a group of women who were anonymous, you don't even know who they are. You don't know what they're political. And he's a, he's a politician on top of it. So this could be politically motivated. This could be an, been a bunch of people set up by the Trump administration to get Franken the hell out of there. Because Franken says he doesn't remember m most of these allegations. And the one allegation he did remember, which was the first one by Leanne Tweeden, this uh, half-assed sports reporter over at uh, KAB, uh, WAB, uh, KABC in, in Los Angeles, um, uh, uh, she, uh, she, she, uh, for, he apologized, she forgave him, and uh, most people who were there said it was, it was just meant to be a gag photo anyway. And uh, the rest of it is a he said, she said. But anyway, he apologized. She accepted the apology. So she didn't feel hurt by it. No, no harm, no foul, right? The rest of these women, we don't even know who they are. And neither does Franken, quite frankly. One of them supposedly happened while he was doing his radio show. I mean, this is not something he did while he was in the Senate, you know, and the supposed grabbing of an ass in a, in a photo op when somebody was taking a selfie, I mean, his hand could have slipped anything, or maybe he didn't even do that. Maybe because he had his hand in back of her, she could make that claim in the photo. You know, all this is so minor. It is so compared to the, the, the horrible things that we've heard about, about uh, uh, Matt Lauer, about... Uh, 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 you know, Harvey Weinstein. This is like, this is small stuff. But he was the sacrificial lamb. He was put upon the altar uh, in order to appease the Republicans in case they want to come out and say terrible things about Roy Moore. Absent the Roy Moore situation, I can guarantee you that he would still uh, be here. You know, he would still be um, doing his thing. So anyway... That's, you know, that's enough of that. Okay, uh, let me go to the phones here and talk to people. But I just wanted you to know that Chuck Schumer didn't send me anything. <laughs> I didn't expect it. What a sleazebag motherfucker he is. I can't stand him. You know, I, this is why I hate liberals. You know, I've often said I can't stand liberals. Now, this says SG calling. Who the hell is SG? Who is, the, who is, the, who is, who is, who's, who's this calling? Hello, SG. Well, who's SG? Hey, who's well. SG? Show me. A, you got. A, you got a camera? Yeah. Yes. Sh show me a picture. You know. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. It's, there we go. Now move your camera down a little, up a little bit, so we can see your face. There we go. And SG, have we had you on before at all uh, on, yep. the, on the program. We have. Uh, wait one, a minute. Hold on a second. I'm one trying or two to. Two times. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. I just want to. Uh, there we go. Okay. Yeah, yeah. How you doing, SG? Doing great. How do you feel about what I was just talking about? Well, I, I kind of missed that, so. Yeah. Uh, you missed the whole thing I was saying? 
Yeah, sort of. It was about the Al Franken thing today. Oh, yeah. You know what? I'm a GOP guy, and uh, I don't think, uh, you know, he should have resigned. I don't think he should have resigned either. No. You know, I, I don't see what he felt he was going to accomplish by resigning, you know. He uh, he took a bullet for the uh, DNC, and, you know, they have some kind of plan or whatever, but... Uh, I, I just don't think that uh, he should have resigned. And, you know, I kind of hate the guy. But... Well, well, that's because you're a Republican. <laughs> yeah. yeah well, and I, I, I just don't think he uh, should have resigned. Yeah. Why do you hate him? Hate is a, is well, a, is a, no, a, just, hate is a hate. tough term. So that's. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I mean, well, pick me another. Well, yeah, no, yeah. that's somebody else just calling in. Don't worry about yeah, that. Pick another word, but it, um, you, it just he's uh, he, he's you know, I, I, I kind of like the way that he uh, really hones in and tries to get uh, you know, ask hard questions and that, that kind of stuff. But you, but, know, but you just said a moment ago that you hated him, you know, and I, I don't understand why if you're saying such nice things about him now. No, it just it's just uh, I, I I think he uh, goes beyond what is uh, he's doing his thing and it, as maybe you're right as a GOP guy that's that's maybe why, that's I, I'm, why I'm just not a why fan of him. Now up uh, just joining us is Phil Meyer, and Phil is another hey. Republican. So you this is like uh, uh, this is a, hey, a I'm being ga I'm being ganged up on here. Yeah, gang bang. Hey, yeah. <laughs> how you doing? Yeah. Uh, yeah, Al Franken, uh, probably, uh, I, I don't agree with the witch hunt that's going on. Uh, I can't say that I'm sorry that he's gone because he's just, uh, uh I, I don't like his politics. And, well, no, but uh, they, you know something, you don't have to like his politics, but no. it, you know, he was an, he was a, uh, a hands-on senator. He was there all the time. You know, he was doing yeah. his job, and you got to well, you got to admire that, Phil. I mean, well, I, you can be against his think, politics, no, no, but that's wait a minute. You got you draw, putting the bar too low. Doing the job is what they're supposed to do. I know, but a anything anything above that is. I'm just uh, saying that as one thing. Okay. Yeah. You know, it's not the only thing. You know, I do the job. I show up here almost every night. You know, but does that? How high does that set the bar? <laughs> you know, yeah. uh, Al Franken. Uh, you know, he he, um, he had his agenda. He had of his course. beliefs. Of he course. carried out his beliefs. Of course. And uh, I hope the seat goes to a Republican. Uh, it won't. Uh, it might in 2020. Uh, you know, the, there's a Democratic governor in yeah. Wisconsin. Yeah. He'll most likely appoint a Democratic uh, senator. Uh, I think there's uh, one that's a state senator that wants to. Well, uh, to begin with, you're, you, you, you see, see how unknowledgeable you are about things. You want me to okay. tell you how you how unknowledgeable you are well, to begin with? The yeah, the, the election it's, it's is Minnesota. It's Minnesota, but it, the, uh, the, the the election. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. The election. The, like, will you listen to me? The election isn't in twenty twenty. No, that was when uh, the election. That was when the election. Was it, it, the election is next year. Here's the reason why: uh, the governor will appoint a temporary senator. Probably yeah. be a Democrat because he's a Democrat, and yeah. Franken was a Democrat, and that's only fair, right? But then they're going to hold an election next year to find out who's going to fill out the rest of Franken's term. So. Yeah. Oh, OK. Well, I knew that Franken's uh, seat was up for re-election in 2020. Yeah. I didn't know the minutia of uh, 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 what's this? It, it's not Wisconsin. I mix those two up all the time. Minnesota. Uh, so Minnesota. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, you know. One way or another, so okay. There's a little bit of minutia there. Yeah, uh, I'm glad you can have a drink. Hello, Bree. But hello, hello. How Alex. are you? Have you got a camera? But this there's one? a silver lining have for you got, Al Franken. Wait a minute. Have you got a camera? Uh, just waking up. Oh, okay. So you so, don't want everybody to see you with bags under your eyes. I understand. 
<laughs> anyway, is the silver lining for Al Franken? How's that? Yes. He is now qualified to run for president. <laughs> you know, if he wanted to, he could probably turn around and run for senator again. Yeah, you know. because once you get elected, all of your sins are cleansed, apparently. Yeah, apparently, apparently. You know, he, he it, I think it is, uh, I almost had to cheer when he made the remark about, you know, isn't it, doesn't it seem odd that I'm having to leave office, but a president who's been accused any number of times uh, for uh, harassing women and a guy down in uh, Alabama who may be another senator is co has been uh, accused of, uh, you know, child molestation, essentially, and I'm having to leave office. He said, isn't that... No, no, no. You know I why he said that? You know why he said that, though? Why? He said that to uh, set it up so that he may come back and say, you know what, all this other stuff, I'm not going to resign. Well, he's going to, he's going to, he says he will offer his resignation by the end of the year. Now, that he could turn around and say, I've had second thoughts about this. You know, I'll exactly. tell you, I went to, hold on a second, Mike, I'll get to you next. Uh, okay. I, I went to Kirsten Gillibrand's site to see what kind of reaction she was getting on Facebook. Universally, people hated her. The one woman said, I'm a rape victim and I hate what you did. Mm. You know, um, uh, the people who were an, uh, writing on those, I mean, a, a lot of people just really hate her for this. And uh, I think, uh, uh, you know, she's not going to get my vote the next time. I, I, I'll vote for a, dog, for, for a dog before I vote for her. Looks like you're going Republican, huh? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I, no, I'm just, I will not vote for her, you know, just like I can't bring myself, when I go into that voting booth and it says uh, um, a Amy Schumer's uncle, uh, I don't, uh, I don't cast a vote for her. I, 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 I cast a vote for if the communist is running, I check it there, anywhere. I, I don't vote for a Republican, but, uh, you know, I'm, she's not getting my vote. It doesn't matter. She'll get elected anyway, but I think that she is was acting in the worst interest of the Democratic Party. Absolute worst interest. And it was and it, would you agree with me that if this were in any if there wasn't a, a Roy Moore down in Alabama with this situation that they he would have been forced out? Yes. You think so, Mike? I think so. Why? No. What was their motivation no. in throwing him to the wolves? Making him the sacrificial lamb. Because they're all guilty. No, no, no. Because they're all good. All these senators, they're not, you know, most of them are not, you know, behind their everybody's backs. Who knows what goes on between both sides of the house. SG seems to disagree with you, SG. SG? No, I think, uh, no, I agree with you. Yeah. Um, that they can't go around yelling about Roy Moore if they've got something like this going on is how they feel no, about exactly, it. Exactly right. It was it was a, uh, um, you know, it, it's a total. Uh, can we re kind of brand ourselves? Yeah. So that in 2018 we win more seats. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it was it was it, there. There was no reason to get rid of him. Not based on what we heard. That's no. pretty Machiavellian. What? What do you mean it's uh, Machiavellian? You live. You're talking about Washington. If Machiavelli were alive, he'd be a senator. Yeah. Hey, you know, uh, I don't think anybody wants to give up anything, and I don't think they wanted to throw him to the to the lambs. But I, I think that so the, uh, minute, throw him to the lambs. You throw somebody to the lambs, they're going to be in good shape. To the lambs. You know, to the uh, yes, to the to the you know, wolves. I didn't think the he was the one that they wanted to get rid of. They, they he was the golden boy. But it, it was a uh, Republican in Arizona uh, just uh, just stepped down uh, because of uh, these kinds of improprieties. I don't think. Are uh, you talking about Frank? Uh, I think so. It's uh, he was a state senator, I think, or oh, state. Oh, state oh, oh, that thing. Yeah, yeah, but that yeah. has nothing. To, that has nothing to do with national politics. You know? no, well, it's just no. All one, I'm saying is, it, is that in swept any, up in, in the in, same thing. In any other atmosphere, in any other atmosphere, uh, this guy would be. Uh, uh, w w they wouldn't ask him to resign. 
but they're asking me to resign to get out of the way so they can go after Roy Moore and maybe, you know, nobody's going after the president. God knows oh, up to 15 women have accused him of this sort of thing. That's, he didn't admit and neither did Roy Moore. But, so what? Uh, it doesn't matter. Frank, uh, Frank, Franken did. No, Franken admitted he couldn't deny that the photograph was taken. Right. The person who took the photograph said it was a gag photo. She was awake. She knew it was happening. As for the rest of the stuff, uh, he, he said, I remember it all differently. Uh, but yeah. then for the rest of these things, he asked the thing that the straw that broke the camel's back, that made Kirsten Gillibrand suddenly become the cunt that she is, okay, Ooh. is it was uh, 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 this whatever woman who we don't even know the name of because she's anonymous, who said that, that she, she was working at, at, uh, uh, with him on radio. Do you know how long ago that was on radio? That was like almost 10 years ago. Well, how long more. was uh, Moore? Wasn't well, that wait a minute. Hold on a second. Yeah, but wait a minute. Let me finish. Forget Moore for a second. Two wrongs yeah. don't make a right, okay? Uh, and she said that he said uh, that he, be, he kissed her or something, and then he said, you know, when you're an entertainer, you can do that sort of thing. Well, that kind, of, that kind of almost is like trying to parrot what, what Trump said, which leads one to believe she's making it up. But secondly, if she isn't making it up, he said it never happened. I would never say anything like that. That's not who I am, and I that's a ca cate it, I categorically deny that that statement. You know, well, so so it, so he didn't you, admit to all of it. No, uh, not to all of it, but to some of it. No, only to one thing. <laughs> only uh, to one said, thing. And uh, in that case, the woman said, "I accept your apology." So yeah, if she isn't bothered. Well, why should we be? Where are all these other women that came forward? Well, they're anonymous. Not all of them. No, they're all anonymous. Huh. And you don't want to protect the identity of, a, of the woman? I will that... protect the identity of a woman if she's been raped. And only in that case. But if she's going to turn around and accuse a guy of touching her ass and ruin yeah. his career, I think she <clears throat> should not be allowed anonymity. No. Okay. Alex touched my ass. <laughs> 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 I was looking for my glasses. <laughs> Who wants to? Hey, uh, just on a lighter note, I had this cystoscopy. The cyst cystoscopy. That's where they take uh, this telescope and shove it up your dick. Yes. Isn't that pleasant? And, uh, Isn't it pleasant? Uh, after, well, no, it wasn't pleasant, but uh, the, the first couple of 30 seconds, maybe 15 seconds, yeah. that was not pleasant at all. But uh, after that, I, I didn't even know it was done. You know, the worst part about it is, then we're going to get back to this, folks. Don't worry. We're going to continue talking about Al Franken uh, or, and other stuff. And by the way, we could use some more callers. Where is everybody tonight? Anyway, uh, all I remember is when they pull it out, water goes everywhere. Uh, I don't think I had that issue. Uh, because but, it, they use water to... Yeah. They fill your bladder up. It, it, well, to open it up so they can look around in there. Yeah. And uh, then when they pull it out, all the water goes, <laughs> uh, you know. Well, I made it to the restroom, and I had the best pee I've had in 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> so what did they see? Anything in there? Uh, nothing. Nothing. Everything your bladder's small. fine. Yeah. 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 Uh, he, he said he didn't know how I pee with the size of my prostate. Well, we, uh, well, I, you don't either. So, uh, you yeah. know, yeah. Yeah. So anyway, uh, I thought there was a whole bunch of news. No, well, wait a uh, minute. Let's uh, continue on this. Oh, first. Frank, that was the, well, uh, Arizona. Well, I just said Frank. Oh uh, yeah. But he's and, a representative. Uh, he's a, he's in Congress. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He's Arizona representatives, G, yeah. uh, GOP representative. Yeah. But you know, it just, but it he, just didn't, he didn't, he didn't quit. No, he, he, yes, he resigned. Did he resign? Oh, no. so following sexual harassment claim. He resigned? I guess he the is, last thing I he heard he had. Resigned. He's what? going to resign following the harassment claim. And this is a CNN uh, thing. How, how new? That may be just recent. It's, because... top, it's the top story, and it's the uh, last one. That oh, was... earlier today, he hadn't yet resigned. He, no, he he hasn't resigned. He will yeah, resign. Will resign. Well, so the same thing's true of Franken. Right. Fra Franken hasn't resigned yet officially. Uh, 
He, no, he's resigning at the end of January. Yeah. Now, is Franken not resigning because of his retirement? Maybe he hasn't been there long long enough to uh, to to get all the benefits. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Oh, okay. So even if he resigns, if he's you're, going to if get you're a senator for one day, you get health care for life. Yeah, and uh, what about? Uh, well, he's over sixty-five anyway, isn't he? Probably. Yeah, um, but uh, it, there's also your salary. Uh, you know, uh, I'm sure he's pretty well healed. But well, I'm sure he really that hundred and sixty thousand a year or something they pay a con uh, senator, maybe one hundred seventy-five, maybe something, some round in that area. Yeah, uh, is not something I think he's going to miss. You know. Yeah. I mean, I he, I'm sure he. he yeah. I'm sure he was doing fine before that. For that, yeah. Okay. We've been joined by Jeff Stein. Hello, Jeff. Hello, how you doing? Did you hear the speech uh, by, by Franken? I heard the end of it, yeah. It's pretty sad. Uh, pretty sad. Yeah, um, it is. I, I kind of agree with you on that a lot. I know my wife is absolutely on the opposite end of this spectrum, but... That's well, well you know, I, I, I look, I, I've got to say this to the women out there. It's okay to root for the home team. Uh, it's okay to root for the home team. But in this case, a great injustice has been done to somebody. I really believe that. And it has nothing to do with whether you're a man or a woman, you know. Uh, and uh, I just, you know, he just, it, what he did was not, it, it didn't, even if everything were true, but put your head a little more in 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 the center if you can, Jeff. We're we're seeing the the bo whole bottom of your head. There we that's, go. Oh, that's good. Oh, now it's perfect. Um, you know, I I say to women out there, you know, you can root for the home team, but sometimes you got to make sure that you know when you fire your shots, the bullets don't hit a, an innocent person or don't hit somebody who who shouldn't get shot you know I mean, tell Kate Steinle huh uh, come on don't we're not talking about that Phil you're changing you're, you they want to name the wall after her you ready for that but we'll get to that in a while no okay so about uh Franken yeah you know back then and you know with with uh there's a lot of things that people just did and now now and I'm a Trump supporter big time, but now we're all redefining what people should be based on now versus then. Well, so, I, I agree with that. I mean, uh, there are certain crimes you don't want to forgive ever, like murder. You want to make that, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know. But what I know what you're saying, and what you're saying, let me give you a good an example that fits me. Uh, I am suing the person who rented us this apartment for what's a thing called illusory tenancy. An illusory tenancy means that somebody lives somewhere. Uh, let's see your full face too, SG. You're kind of like you got the, yeah, yeah. If, if, why don't you just tilt your camera? There we go. Okay. I move around a lot, but go ahead. Anyway, uh, 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 illusory tenancy is when you, when you live somewhere, but you don't really live there. Some, now your head is completely missing. <laughs> just right there, right, there, right there. perfect um when you when you uh, live when you rent an apartment but you don't live there so you sublet it or in our case rent it right to a person and you don't live there it's called illusory tenancy now illusory tenancy has been against the law in stabilized apartments for maybe the last 20 years okay it, before that, there was no such thing. Nobody said it was wrong for you to do that. All right? Uh, that being the case, you're talking about here situations in which socially people weren't told that it was wrong to act that way. I mean, I always felt it was wrong to act that way, but I have a higher moral compass, okay? So, you know, I mean, uh, my question is, if something happened, well, 40 years ago, a 14-year-old girl, that still was against the law back then, all right? All right, but wait a minute. You got Alabama. Where the age of consent is nine, yeah, go ahead. Uh, no, but wait a minute. You got Alabama. You got the parents. You got, I'm, I'm not making a case for Roy Moore. 
I'm just saying there are things that now all of a sudden are, are, are coming out. And I'm, uh, you know, Franken should not have done what he did, I don't think, in terms of uh, resigning. And I think it's, you know, all of a sudden we're saying all the stuff from, from way back then. When I was a when you know I was eighteen and twenty one and stuff like that, we'd always say, "Did you get her?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't say that, by the way, but maybe you did. I I know a lot of guys that did. Guys would say that to me, "Did you get her?" And I was always the kind that would never kiss and tell. Yeah, does that surprise you? I don't know. You suddenly stunned by my answer. <laughs> No, but you know it's it just yeah. different, different times, and 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 women want men too. Yeah, but they they women are far more protective of themselves than men are of themselves, and there's a reason for that. They Depends can get on the guy they want. No, they can no. Hold on a second, Phil. They can get pregnant, and that that very simple fact. M creates a, a great series of, 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 what can we call it, conditions. Women are protective of themselves. And so they have the right to say no, and you should have the decency to oblige them in that. Would you agree, Jeff? Yes. Yeah, I would. I would even add more things. Yeah. I mean, let's assume that they couldn't become pregnant. For any for some uh, physical reason, yeah, I I still think that they have the right to to say no, and, you, and for you to and for you to honor that. Yes, yes. yes. Did you did you forget about the birth control pill that kind of even Wait things minute, the, up? The, the birth seats? control pill doesn't stop penetration, Phil. No, 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 no. <laughs> but you see the the no, argument. No, 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 no. I know, the I know. But what I'm saying, no. But, pregnant. but biological imperatives. Bi I mean, hold on a second. Biology. Uh, <laughs> and Freud said it once, and and women go crazy over the statement, but I believe it to be true. That biology is destiny. All right. That what is, and that you sometimes have to fight that destiny. Uh, and women have had the ability to use the birth control pill, but that doesn't mean that their <clears throat> biological self doesn't say, I want to protect myself. Okay? Yeah. Oh, okay, I'll give you that. All right, yeah. good. I the, won the one pill, from Phil. Yeah. I want to say something. The pill is not a pass that allows you to have rape. No, Come no, on, no. Phil. Well, I well, was, you you said that. No, what I said was is that I was countering Alex's argument it, it, that it, a woman can get pregnant, and that's the reason why she should have the right to well, say the yes. Well, the, no. the other part of it is, Phil, let me give you the other part, is what I just said, penetration. There's a difference, right. between, oh, there's, a, the there's a difference between penetration and penetrating, okay? Yeah. Uh, and and uh, being penetrated is a far more <laughs> inclusive act than penetra doing the penetrating yourself. You get what I'm saying? It's a whole psychological thing I'm talking about here. Uh, well, yeah, that's, And so that's, therefore, women are more protective of themselves. Men are never protective of their bodies. If they were, they, they would... Uh, how many times in your life when a woman said, fuck me, did you say no? Well, you know, unless I had to tie a two-by-four to my ass so I didn't fall in and drown, yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah, but you know what I'm saying. No, yeah. Guys don't say no. Yeah, uh, some do. You know, I, I mean, guys like well, me I've, don't. I've, I've said but... no. I've said no. <laughs> I've said no on a couple of occasions, and and some women have been upset by that. Not because they were unattractive or anything like that, but I just didn't think the situation was right. Yeah. I understand. It's uh, you know, uh, look, I know, I know guys that some of them are so good looking and the women would pursue them uh, like uh, like nobody's <laughs> As she just and, raised his yeah, hand. Yeah, uh, yeah. So anyway, what, what the situation is, is, you know, they would pursue them, but they wouldn't necessarily pursue me, you know, uh, although I have had friends that have been in that position and they would say no because that wasn't the 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 look or, or whatever they wanted they were much more particular because they had uh, a much greater opportunity at uh 
scoring. By the way, by the way, does anybody notice what's over my, uh, let's see here, right shoulder? You got yeah. a Trump bear? Yeah. There, what's, what's there? Little bear. Trumpy. Huh? There's Trumpy bear right there. So you, Hold on you, a second, folks. Let me go get it. Hold on a second. <laughs> here oh we my, go. Uh, the, uh, the new host of the show here this evening. Ah, there he is. Uh, okay. There is Trumpy Bear. Uh, hold on a second. I can't hear you guys if you're talking. <laughs> there he is. There's Trumpy Put your... Bear. See the hair? Yeah. See yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hold on a second. Let me just put on my earphones here while I have Trumpy Bear. I'm... Marjorie sent away for it. I, I couldn't bring myself to do it. I didn't want to give those slime bags money. Okay. So uh, you got so much fuck you money that you're able to get Trump in there? Yeah, yeah. This, this for, is, this is, this for, is for, this, for, for, and you know something? So you, it's a really, uh, uh, hold on a second. Let me just uh, do something here. This is a really ugly fucking bear, too. Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> Who is the company? that Did they have any association with Trump? I don't know. All I know is we got a, a certificate of authenticity. Yeah, uh, and and it's got the the it, they put this hair up there and in the back and I'm not going to pull it out because I'll never get it back in. There is a little uh, little uh, what do you call it uh, zipper, and inside is the American flag blanket that you can use to keep yourself warm and comfy. I'm sorry you can't see this, Bree. He's a real. You could probably see it. He's just we can't see him. Yeah, I can see it. Oh, you can see it. Oh, okay. So there's there's Trumpy Bear. So yeah, what a waste of money. Fuck him. Hey, uh, uh, yeah. uh, I I don't want to change this. Yes, I do want to change the subject because I don't like Al Franken. Uh, 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 what's going on with Jerusalem and uh, Dubai and uh, you know what uh, Trump uh, naming Jerusalem as uh, recognizing as the capital of Israel? Yes. yes. Well, the uh, the front covers of the paper are you know uh, completely outraged yeah. um but uh so far so good in terms of uh our neighborhood you know and uh, and this country so far uh you know peace is prevailing uh, so nobody is nobody's yelling burn baby burn in dubai no but you know it creates a lot of uncomfortable situations because i do have uh colleagues Many colleagues who uh, are really, really vehemently opposed to what he said, and so it creates a little bit of awkwardness. Um, you know, uh, you you being an American. It's hard to explain. You being an American. Yeah. So they kind of look at you like you know that's that's your guys doing. Yeah, yeah, like uh, kind of. It's complicit in some sense, you know, yeah. unless I, unless I, uh, you know, say something against it. I, yeah. So it's it makes for a lot of difficult situations, um, yeah. at least in the short term. Yeah. So what, what um, do you do? tell them? You're Canadian. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Y yes, uh, Mike. Trump should never open his big mouth. Shut up, Phil. Let me finish. Well, same to you, you asshole. Oh. Anyway, Trump you know what? The oh, asshole. Yeah. Oh. The asshole is probably the most um, important part of the body. So there you go. Yeah. Go ahead. But anyway, I was saying is Trump should never open his mouth up. Tel Aviv is the capital of Israel. I don't care what Trump says. If you look at Trump's eyes, he looked like he had a little mini stroke. Look, Philadelphia eye. was once the capital of the United States. Now it's Washington D.C. So you know things change. I love how you how you try to equate one thing with another. But still, it doesn't matter. Uh, Tel Aviv uh, is uh, still. And now he's going to come out with a funny answer to this one and try and deflect the the point. But well, is is New York a holy city? Uh, does, yes, does, yes, Phil, the, does Washington have any uh, well, but uh, holy it, significance? Couple, yeah, it's a couple uh, of things a going on. State. It, it, it's uh, the, the District of Columbia. It's not a state. No, no, so. but, no, that's not the point. The point is, Jerusalem 
is a very it's a very contentious question okay it's not it's not like uh, uh, should we hold have it in Washington DC or not no this is a city that is claimed as being the the shrine of two major religions both of which trying to lay claim over it it's a very sensitive subject and you don't stir it up uh, That's well, right. well, you you may be afraid to stir it up, but when the when East Jerusalem was in control of uh, by the uh, the Arabs, did they allow uh, Israelis to go into East Jerusalem? Uh, this is a question. I have no idea. Maybe I do, do you know anything did. about that, Bree, at all? I remember they did. Uh, they did. I think they did. Yeah. All right. Well, the, yeah. now I know that the Israelis have opened the city up to all religions. And from what I was led to understand is uh, Christians uh, were restricted. There was a lot of restrictions that uh, weren't uh, that aren't being uh, levied on the people now. Uh, as Jeff has got it. Oh, are you saying something, Jeff? No. no. Oh, OK. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so any, I, I'm not sure if uh, if it was. That's why I asked. I posed it in a, in a question, uh, but I think it was. Yeah. Well, the, All right. what, here, what here, happens here, here is it gets wait, wait, very wait, wait, muddy. Wait, hold on a second. Hold on a second, SG. We'll go to you next. Yes, Bree. What were you going to say? We we I think to a large extent um, we sort of got it to the position where we were discussing that the issue there as a, a political issue involving human rights. But what Trump has done is to shift the conversation towards religion, which, which is kind of what you don't want to do. And the other thing is he said uh, he was not making a decision about the Israeli sovereignty of the city, but uh, he never acknowledged the Palestinian side of things. So I, uh, it's really, uh, uh, you know, uh, it's just a quagmire, and I wish that uh, I, I don't understand the need to do it right at that moment, except for that his son was testifying at the time, and perhaps he was looking to change the media narrative at the moment, because why right now? You know, it's not as if he doesn't have a few other things going on in the world. Um so I, I don't understand why he is constantly, you know, just picking fights all the time. Well, part of it, uh, unless part of it's it, from part of it, Bree, is I think he's trying to deflect from the Russia probe. He's, no, no, he's trying no, to do no. anything he can to say, "Look over there, don't look here." No, look. I, I think well, you're right, and, and, and yeah. it's because Donald Trump Jr. was testifying. That was number one. And number two, Deutsche Bank is apparently releasing some documents. So okay, SG had a uh, had a question or a comment. All right. So, you know, in terms of Jerusalem, you know, is it the capital or not? No. Of. Of what? Of Israel. Yeah. No, it is not. Uh, the Israelis. What is the, what uh, is the capital? Tel Aviv. Uh, Tel Aviv. Really. Yes. Yeah. It's always been Tel Aviv. Well, that's because... Really? Well, it, you, when you say capital, <laughs> financial, religious, you know, if you if you ask people what's the financial capital of the U.S., what would you say? New York. New York. Okay, yeah. And so there are different... It depends on what type of capital. Uh, Trump is saying the religious capital. It's based on... Jerusalem is important because of its religious monuments, Nothing else. But you know, it, you know it, the stupidity so, is why do you why do we move our our uh, our uh, uh, embassy there? What 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 advantage does that give us to have an embassy there? Ex maybe Trump. What, what, what is the capital of Israel? The capital of Israel is Tel Aviv. It's Tel Aviv. Mm -hmm. Tel and Aviv. There, there are eighty three other embassies in Tel Aviv. The only embassy that will be in Jerusalem is uh, the U.S. embassy. If he goes through with it, uh, but uh, the recognizing like Costa Rica was Jerusalem, there. Recognizing Jerusalem was a promise that uh, Trump made on the campaign well, trail. What kind of promise does he? Ha it's not his promise to make. It, it's, it, not it was a fucking, to it's not his fucking. It's not his evangelical Christians what? that that oh, see. Oh, I what see. Are, what, okay. What is the, 
What does the prime minister of Israel say the capital is? Oh, so, so oh, oh, I see. So, I oh, so you, you you think he was trying to appeal to the evangelical Christians, just like yes. a lot of people are now believing that a lot of people in Trump's midst want to see the end of days, okay, uh, and that know. they they are 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 positioning everything to bring about the end of days. The prime minister of Israel says, "What is the capital?" He said, well, he knows what the capital is. Otherwise, he wouldn't he be say? there being president. What does he say? He's, uh, I, he uh, says no. they would like to make it. They would like to make He's, move it to Jerusalem. The minister of Israel says the capital is Jerusalem. No, he didn't. No, he said he would like to make it Jerusalem. He did not. What is that? It, he can't say well, it is the capital. Another, He's, here's it, another issue. How do you define New York? Oh my God! What's that got to do with Jerusalem, though? What? Uh, uh, oh gosh, it has so no. many things. Have you been there? Do you know what this? I was born there. You know, it's amazing. <laughs> it's, define it's part of the Dutch. Pittsburgh, Allegheny County. Define New York. Is Queens? Is Manhattan? Okay. Uh, let, is Long Island let, let, part let, of let, New York let, City? Let, let's simplify this. Why does the Prime Minister say he's he's grateful for Trump saying uh, what he did about Jerusalem? Uh, I would imagine because they want to change the capital to Jerusalem, uh, that the Isra Israelis do want Jerusalem to be their their capital. And and, and, so, and okay, why? Well, I don't know why. Well, uh, then well give, I, give me I an answer. Oh, wait a minute, Jeff. Why? Because three thousand years ago, the Jews took over that area, and they said. We we know the name of this this city. It's called Jerusalem. That's because we call it Jerusalem. And you know what? We've been doing that for three thousand years or four thousand years. And the reality is, a lot of times, other people came and took it away from them, like the Roman, like the this, like the that. And right. and and this place changes every whatever thousands of years. Yeah, yeah, and everybody who's had a piece of it wants to keep their piece and more. Yeah. And I guess the Israelis want their piece back. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, the Israelis are to begin with. The uh, Israelis, the people who went to uh, to Israel to found Israel uh, when they went to that Palestine to found Israel. Uh, they couldn't have gone to a more alien place for them. The Jews that li the Jews that lived in that area and had lived there for thousands of years were had had almost nothing to do with the kind of Jews that were European Jews. That's uh, true. And and uh, in fact, uh, they weren't even considered the same kind of Jews. And yet yes. they said, we're going back to the homeland. We're going back. It's 2,000 years you haven't been there. If I vacate this apartment for 2,000 years, I've got to expect that when I come back, there are going to be some other people living here. That's yeah, right. but you might be able to do a illusory tenancy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if we were going to impose our view onto that situation, mm -hmm. why not impose a more idealistic view and i'm not because it's not reality it's just what he's saying and he signs a piece of paper that doesn't make it reality it it's it's interesting yeah. and it gets a lot of media coverage and it's nice for you know the prime minister over there of israel but why not why not if you you know if you if you're just going to imagine things why not imagine something more creatively interesting like a unified why not to say we recognize jerusalem as the capital of the the state of israeli stein or you know why not just say we recognize it as the capital of both states or well, for a moment though i don't know why not impose your nobody will? but but he said in his he said in his uh statement that the uh, the boundaries and all that will be uh, decided upon the people who are there. So he, he by did, the Israeli he, he did, sovereignty. He no, mentioned he did, Israeli exactly, sovereignty. He did, he did not exactly, mention 
He did exactly what you suggested. No, he state. didn't. He didn't. Now, I would disagree with your interpretation of the speech. No, no. And as a content textual semiotic analysis with a PhD for 27 years, I disagree. I've only studied I, media. Oh, I'm media a dad with two kids that were really Here we go. up. And it's all about like, opinions now. and Everybody's got one. Yep, just like assholes. Uh, I'm telling you. You're pulling the PhD I, card? I, I, I conduct, hey, let oh, Bree, Bree can pull the PhD analysis. card, but I'll tell you what card he can pull. I'll, I'll get to you in a second, Mike. I'll tell you what he, what he can pull more than anything else is he lives in Dubai. He knows that area. He knows the Arab them. He knows the wow. a, Arab mind. Am I yeah, right, Bree? Listen, if, if you want to talk, okay, you want to talk from an American perspective, I'll give you that. If that's all you want. I lived in America a long time. Yeah, Israel. They're our best friend. They're our partner. Yeah, we got to do. That's what. Okay, is that if that's what you want to hear, if that's the perspective you want, great. Well, I, I can think, do. Think that. about this. Brie. I lived. <laughs> I lived in the states Brie. for a very, very long time. What if I Trump, know the drill? What if Trump's friend? Trump, everybody else is our enemy. Wait a minute, Bree. What if Trump was just trying to take the bargaining chip of Jerusalem off the table? No, there's Phil. There's no bargaining chip. What the well, hell are you saying? You're an American? How, how are you going God to negotiate? damn you. No, Israel's our friend. You stupid. There's no bargaining chip. What the hell are you saying? No, what he's the, trying so to there do. you go. It, well, this is the way that we question. think. What, what he's trying to do is negotiate a peace between Israel and the Arab Well, he states. sure is doing it in a no. shitty way. No, it's not. If he takes the bargaining chip of, Israel, of Jerusalem off the table... Uh, by recognizing Jerusalem, then he starts out. But wait, no, he went. No, he went. He started, died. Well, no, I'm okay, telling here, you. Here, here's a question. Look, look, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Hold on a second, hold on a second everybody. Hold on a second. Let me say something here. The one thing that has not been said here is that what he did yesterday or the day before with this proclamation of his is he created a situation that could well bring about World War Three. All right, World War Three. How well, about wait, wait a minute. Hold on a second. I want to breathe. Do you agree or disagree with that? Uh, disagree. I agree, and he intends to win it. All right. So let's say this. Let's say that he never did this, never, ever did this. When would peace come in the Middle East? Uh, peace will oh. not come to the Middle East. Quiet, never quiet, well, quiet, wait a minute. quiet You're may come. You're conflating two issues. You're conflating so many issues. Peace no, I'm not complaining anything. It's not contingent saying... upon Palestine and Israel. All that's, right, so that's he... an American perspective. There are so he... many other issues that go on over here, but 80% said... of media coverage well, wait, wait, has been let's... about Israel-Palestine. You know, I, let me let me ask you a question. Do uh, do you think that no, no actually, it, it will take us down an, a, a road, and you wouldn't understand because you're not here, so I can't go into it. But yeah. Uh, anyway, yeah, uh, U.S. Israel's our friend, and uh, and and Trump prom made his promise, so he has he has signed the paper, he has made the declaration, and that's where we stand. But the thing is, when would peace? If we had taken that back, peace is nowhere. T someone tell me the path of peace. In the Middle East, it's not agitation. No, no, I'm I'm saying it's every, not. Agitation. Every president. Hold on a second. Mike has had his hand up for the longest time. Yes, Mike. Wait, wait. SG, what? have you come to the Middle East? Have you lived here? No, I'm saying I'm asking no, you. No, no. I, I need to. Know I'm asking. You I'm asking. I'm asking you the me. question because you're the expert. No, I, I never what proclaimed is, that. Is path? But I love how you twist it around. But no, the thing no, is, no. is you don't live here, I'm, I'm and you're not from back, here. All you, you're just espousing the views of, of an American who I'm sits... I'm taking back all I said, just for you. You explain to me the path to no, peace. No, I'm not here to explain the path to peace. Can I mention Why something? I let me mention the, something the here. The arbiter of that. The Bree, let me, let, me, let me mention something here. And that is, this idea of path to peace, if we knew what it was... We would have done it a long time ago. Every president since Israel came into existence has attempted to do peace between those parties. And, we know every, what it's not. and every president has failed at it. Okay? okay? We know what it's not. 
And it's what's not is what's been done for the last 60 or 70 years. Well, we've tried a peace process. You know, I mean, every, every, every president has always taken it upon themselves to say, if I can just bring peace to the Middle East. It's just what Phil said. But once again, Alex, don't please don't get into that trope. Uh, Israel-Palestine is one issue among many, and it's only important because you're sitting in the U.S. and the media, you know, has told you that this is the this is the deal. Mm -hmm. It's one issue among so many. Let me ask you a question: Do Jews only live in Israel in the Middle East? Yep. Yes or uh, yeah. no? Yes. Do they well, live anywhere else? Well, they do. Yeah. There, there yeah. are yeah. some Jews live all over the world. There, wait a minute. Hold on a second. There are some. There, there are a handful living in Iran. Uh, and, anywhere else? Uh, I believe. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. Answer me that question, Bree. But I, I do know there's some, some in Iran. Sure. There. Yeah. They're all over. There's the place. five of them in Iran. No, there, there are quite a few. Enough for minion. Quite a few, Phil, and because and they are allowed to exist because they okay, are a theistic religion. What? Here's a question. Here's a question. May I ask? Mm -hmm. May I ask? Yes. Where do Arabs live? It's not an area. They're all over the planet. Where? Uh, but in the Middle East. Saudi. Saudi. Okay. Dubai. Why don't you nope. uh, tell us no, what point no, you're trying to make? What point are you trying to make here, Bree? Let's cut to the chase. I'm trying to make is that we don't. Americans don't understand the Middle East at all. No, we never we never have. And yet, and yet we're the ones who are the arbiter of everything that happens here? No. Who understands the Middle East then? Well, it depends on your view, I would think. We would like exactly. to think our State Department. We would like to think our president. But our president doesn't understand the Mideast. He barely yeah, understands uh, understands himself, you know. He's only doing this because the right-wingers want it done. It. And it's just another one of the things that he wants done before the end of the year. We've been joined by Renee, by the way. Mike had his hand up. Mike? Reed, if I correct on this... What Trump did is cause more pressure in Israel between the country itself. Am I correct? Cause a lot what of pressure. Mean? Within Israel, you're saying? You're... It, it, within Israel. It, within Israel. Between you know, the Palestinians and the Jews. Am I correct? Uh, you know, I, I think so. Yeah. I mean, from because, what I know, can gather. You know, to me, why does Trump have to open his big mouth up You know, and say... Well, I'm going to make peace and this and that. He, he doesn't know his ass from a hole in the ground. Sorry he didn't ask you first, Mike. Oh, <laughs> bullshit, Phil. Listen, Phil, you don't know shit, so keep your mouth shut. There's between 8,600 and asshole. you got to remember, you gotta remember Mike's Jew. way of arguing things is Trump's an asshole and you don't know shit, Phil. Oh, I'm on dad mad up here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> huh. In some states, you can get arrested for that, SG. Anyway... Uh, you know, I mean, uh, what Bree is saying, though, is something that we we should pay great attention to. And that oh my is, God, the man well, let me let me make a couple of other. Points. Well, wait a minute. But, but what I'm trying to say, Bree, is that, you know, you're there. You you know, the mindset you deal with uh, it every it's day. It's not just that, Alex. In college and university, my roommate was from Israel. Mm -hmm. And and uh and the guy who ran the store on the corner was from Palestine. So, like, uh, it, it's not just that I'm here now, although, you know, that definitely contributes to it. But it's that I've, 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 I've seen both sides just for so long yeah. that it's really hard for me to, uh, to, to, to pick one. By the way, let me ask you, your, your friend that was from Israel, wh how was mm -hmm. he politically? I mean— she. She. How was she politically? Yeah. Uh, she didn't really care. She was a filmmaker, so. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. <laughs> she, uh, did she serve yeah. in the military? Of the course. Military? Of course, she did. Yeah. Oh, she could have kicked my butt. And, day of the and she was beautiful. She she was like a supermodel, and it was funny because um, I didn't know she was married. We had I had a couple roommates, one from Norway, one from Israel, and we didn't know uh, she was married until one day. This guy showed up at our door, 
And I was like, can I help you? And he's like, well, yeah, my wife lives here. <laughs> and I was like, well, that's strange that I've lived with her for three months and I didn't know she was married. <laughs> but um, then I said, well, what name can I, you know, what's your name? And it was it was also funny because in an American, he has a very funny name. His name was Nimrod. <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, which is a typical, I guess, name for someone in Israel. But uh, <laughs> what are you, Nimrod? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> sure. But anyway, it was one thing that was funny was when we went down to get milk one day at the mini mart and the guy behind the cash register was like, where are you from? And I said, well, I'm from Pittsburgh. He's like, oh, OK, great. And then she said, well, I'm from Israel. And he said, oh, you're from Palestine, too. And, you know, he came around and gave her a big hug. <laughs> You know what I always bothered me about Islam and and uh, and Judaism is how yeah, it, it is the fact that they basically are the same religion, and that somehow and Christianity, they, huh? And Christianity. Well, not Christianity. No, uh, more so with uh, with Jews and, well, sure. and Islam because Islam always preaches that God is the only God. Christianity has a Trinity, if you may remember. Uh, but the fact is that Jews and uh, and and uh, uh, and, and pe people of the Islamic faith have more in common than any other two religions on the earth. You know, they have treif, we have kosher, same thing. Um, Muhammad. Well, I mean, Muhammad was just a, was just a teacher. He was not a god. Uh, he got the surahs, which make up no, the I Quran. Meant Ab I meant Abraham. Well, Abraham, yes. If you if you go to what I call uh, the Old Testament uh, one point two, uh, he, he, Abraham leaves and goes to Mecca to be with his son Ishmael, and together they yeah. built the Kaaba, that big black building. Uh, but that's not in the Old Testament. You see, Does it, it have a big gold T in front of it? It will yeah. one day, yeah. <laughs> uh, but, you, you know, I mean, that's the... Uh, we have so much in common, okay, as two religions, that it's, it's amazing that we don't get along. Now, the reason why there are Jews in Israel and why there are, I believe, synagogues in Israel is because the Muslims have always welcomed monotheistic religions. The ones they don't want in their country are things like Buddhism or something, or the, where there's more than one god. And uh, uh, okay. so that's that story, you know. But I mean, it it it, it it's amazing to me that it's like two women that showed up to a party wearing the same dress, you know, uh, and yet they're fighting with each other. They're fighting with each I other. I guess. I guess you know one of the things I would say. I don't know if we can apply a medical philosophy here uh, yeah. you know to politics it certainly is never done but the the hippocratic oath of physicians is first do no harm right and and so i guess i have a problem with this i i mean i it's really tough if you have someone there and you think that they're dying or or you know and everything you've done has not worked but they've stayed alive for 70 years or you know then i I don't know. Do you do you? I mean, I didn't watch House, that program on uh, Fox uh, television. Right. But apparently, yeah, I think I watched one episode. He was known for like just trying different things to try to, you know, help the patient or whatever. Right. And I, but a lot of times he would have to find out information that they didn't want to tell him or something he had to figure out. Uh, so if, if that's the approach, like, you know, nothing has worked, so let's just try anything. Uh, okay, I hope it. I hope it works. I don't see that it can, but right. maybe. I think for me, the educate the 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 path is do no harm, and then uh, for me, the issue is always about education, um, and th and time and taste and and youth, and I would just hope that um, you know there's cer a certain evolution to societies. Uh, that occur. We're, we weren't. We're not the same in the U.S. today that we were. Well, you know what the problem in the is. 1940s. Bree, Bree, what the problem yeah. with the United States is is that number one, we're terribly uneducated. 
and, and by and that, it's only going to get worse. Oh no! With, and, these, and, and, with it, these draconian cuts that they put through, it's we're going to just get worse. Yeah, but we're well, going backwards. Okay, but wait a minute. No, I don't you're, think you're, we're taking, so bad. you're taking it slightly <laughs> off subject. Let, let, let me agree so let, with him let, and say, do no harm, which means you you have hi, something you do, uh, and then you don't have terrorist acts. Do no harm. Well, well. Anyway, let me get back to what uh, I was saying, and I'm not trying to remember what I was saying. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I don't remember now what I was going to say. The point I was going to make. So somebody pick up the uh, the. Uh, wasn't my fault. Uh, no, it wasn't your fault this time. You <laughs> say it was Renee's this time. Yeah. It was but Re you know what? I I think you're wrong. Uh, it's going to be harder to get an uh, uh, an education out of high school. A high school education doesn't do anything anymore it's a worthless piece no, of paper oh, I know that we're not saying. sending our people to college we're not like the uk does or most of the other countries do we're not sending our kids to trade school so all we're really doing is setting them up to be even a lower rung on the ladder than they than okay. their parents currently I, I know are. what i know what i was going to say um and it had to do with us being kind of ignorant <laughs> Uh, we uh, we are a country that does not have a world view. Most people in the United States have never left this country, so they don't know what another country is like. You live in a place like the <laughs> Mideast, you can be in another country in 10 minutes, you know. You realize that there are many cultures in this world, but here in America, you don't think of ourselves as being multicultural in spite of the fact that we, you know, if you go down to New Orleans, it's a different, a completely different culture than you'll find in Chicago. But I'm saying that we're largely dumb in this respect. We don't understand certain things. For instance, if I went out and I asked people, who is, who is the Islamic God? Most people would say to me, Allah. And if I said, well, who is the, who is the Jewish God? Uh, they would say, well, just God. Well, it's yeah. the same thing. It's the same goddamn thing. We both believe in the same God, but they don't think so. They think that the, the Islamics believe in a whole different God than we do. Am I right, Bree? Uh, Bree? Read the source by Mitchner. Bree? Oh, I, I don't know about that, Alex. I'm not a yeah. you know, religious theologist. No, but what I'm saying is is that, 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 that we both, Islam and yes, the, oftentimes and the, and the Christian the and Jewish and religions, like to pray to the same God. Yes. You know. Yes, uh, oftentimes people... Uh, believe the same thing, but there's a communication issue where they just want to be disagreeable. You know, so they find a way. Can, can I can I uh, uh, give you a little uh, joke that will give you a description as to how this thing comes about? Well, uh, uh, Jew, they asked a priest, a rabbi, and a minister, oh "How do you divide up money? What goes to the church and what goes to God?" And a priest says to the minister, well, I draw a circle in the middle of the room. I throw the money up in the air. What lands on the outside of the circle goes to God. What lands on the inside of the circle goes to the church. Well, how do you do it, he says to the minister. And the minister says, well, I have a little different interpretation. He says, I draw a circle in the middle of the room. I throw the money up in the air. What lands on the outside of the circle goes to the church. What lands on the inside of the circle goes to God. The, uh, the opposite of so they both turn to the rabbi and they say, how do you do it? And he says, well, I draw a circle in the middle of the room. I throw the money up in the air. What God wants, he keeps. What he doesn't want falls to the ground. So it gives you a, a general idea. Boy, that, of, really, that really made peace in the whole, whole world, that joke. <laughs> uh, it's the interpretation of why everybody thinks that their way is the right way. But it's all no, the same. No, it's a lousy Catskill joke is what it is. Hey. Great. A lot, a lot of if anything, that joke is an argument for atheism. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. Right. There's the argument for net neutrality. Why, why do I have to know who got, who's your God? Why do I have to know who's your Messiah? Why do I have to know who your prophet is? Why you know, do I have to be right. my, you know, I considered a personal a issue. Miss, missing match. I remember when I was in grade school, I, 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 I used to go to a school with nothing but Catholics going there uh, because we were in an Italian neighborhood and they used to say oh your people killed Christ and I finally got to the point where I said yeah and if he comes back we're going to do it again <laughs> you know. yeah I just 
<laughs> okay, a joke that actually is good. Yeah. I like that yeah. one. Yeah, I thought my joke was fine. And, oh, and I, it, I, it really yeah. described what, um, what goes you on. You thought your joke was fine. How many here thought that joke was fine? Would you raise your hands, please? Thank you. Just Rich. the other Republicans. I would say the joke was good when I interjected it and uh, spiced it up a little. With yeah, my exactly. Drink. But that's just I agree an artist. Drink. <laughs> No, no, he didn't make a mistake. He just, you know. Excuse me, Bree, I've been to Turkey. I've been to Syria. And I've been to a lot of places in Europe. Me too. You have to? Where have you yeah. been? Turkey, Greece. Let's see, let's uh, see your face, uh, SG. Actually, SG. actually Greece, Greece was, um, um, they had Turkey went there in the 1920s and slaughtered Greece. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, 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 let's see your whole face. You, you, you look like Kilroy. Wait a minute, wait a minute. SG, you look like Kilroy was here. All we see you is from your nose up. The okay. picture behind your head looks really great. So, you know, yeah, other way, now. other way, other way, other way with the camera. Other way. No, just, go ahead. <laughs> no, yeah. All we got is your eyes and your nose. It looks like you, you got to lower it. Uh, huh? it most yeah. people in the United States haven't even been to Canada, which is like not going on a ferris wheel so it you, we 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 don't travel we're not we a, don't we're not a, we're not a worldly we people and the least worldly people in america are all the people that live in the middle of it because oh. they have to go too far you to got get out one of the two country. three four five six seven eight people here yeah of these eight people has anyone been to less than 20 countries I've been to less than twenty countries. Less than 20? No, 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 less than twenty. You've been to more than twenty. I've been probably. no, I've no, I've I've been to less than twenty. I've mm -hmm. never I've never been to over twenty countries. Fifteen? Uh, no, no. How many? God, I would have to sit here and count it. I'd say maybe eleven, twelve. Okay, twelve. Uh, anybody here been to less than ten countries? No. I, I've been more than ten. Countries. Probably fifteen or twenty. All right. Uh, so new wait a minute. Does, does Canada count? Yeah, uh, sure. Yeah. Canada is, uh, uh, let's see, Belize, um, uh, Belize, France, Germany, Italy, Spain, well, I've been to Canada. So I've only been to two Spain, of those. China. Uh -huh. uh, Mexico. Let me see here. Where else? Um, Mexico. And, oh, Norway. Um, <clears throat> uh, I don't know if I've I ever been to Mexico. I've been to California. No, you said people <laughs> to Cozumel, right? That's another country, right? That's Mexico. That's yeah. No, no, yeah. My point. My point in the question was, uh, if if let's say ten countries is pretty world traveled, and you would consider yourself fairly well traveled, right, Alex? Yeah, I would uh -huh. say, but okay. I, I I can't come up with more than about eight countries. Well, that's fine. Uh, I consider myself uh, well traveled. Uh, you know, uh, yeah, but there's a difference between you and me, Phil, in that world traveling. I learned something. Oh, yeah. okay. okay, compared to America, compared to a, a, the average American, ten country, even three countries is well traveled can, compared to some of these people. But it's different. It, 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 it's not different. Sure, we have a really big country, and uh, it's hard. You know, it's when, hard. When you it's hard. Europe. With a really bad mass transit system that doesn't allow us to go from, with no with no high end rail that gets us from. Us if you're in Italy, LA. you could be in four different countries within four hours. Yeah, we can't do four different states. Oh yeah, oh, excuse hours. me, I didn't I didn't add Switzerland into that. Uh, did I say Germany? Uh, I think so. I don't know, but yeah. I'm sure you've had ten, twelve countries, uh, and and maybe more. I know that I have. Well, I've been to Andorra. That counts. Yeah, well, you know that's the sixth uh, smallest country in the world. Yeah. No. Yeah. Liechtenstein is. No, the yeah, sixth. I think you forgot sixth. London. It's the sixth smallest. Yeah. Right. Yeah, you went to England because you interviewed. Oh, I forgot Poland. England. I forgot England. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. So. Did you go to Scotland or did you go to uh, no. uh, Ireland? No. Did you visit no. either? No, another one. Denmark. Uh, okay. uh, Denmark. Yeah, I've been to Denmark too. You think? Yeah. Oh, I get. I went there because in those days they had sex shows. And, uh, when, I, when I was in sixth grade, I did a report on Andorra. And, and they, and they said, did you, go, did you go to uh, 
Did you go to Tivoli Gardens or something, which is one of the biggest yeah. uh, uh, parks in the world? And I said, no, I just went there for the sex shows. You would get stuff about Brazil. Brazil, no. Brazil? I, yeah. I, I've always wanted to go to Brazil, but I hear it's kind of dangerous. It okay, really is. so with the eight people that are here, all, all of us have been to at least a couple of countries, and many of us have been to more than ten. Right, but that does, that makes us above average. <clears throat> United States. Oh. If you've yep. been to three yes. countries We're in this world, it's, you're, forty percent of you're, the United States don't even own a passport, and those people, forty percent, haven't even left. That's the United because States. they're all illegal aliens. Those forty percent. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But so I don't know that you know necessarily yeah. just traveling makes you. Yeah. What, what's your point, Jeff? Well, that's true. Wait, Jeff, yeah. Jeff, 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 Jeff wants to say something. Jeff wants to say something. What? Okay, I, I'm just going to assume that, that my calculation is correct. That I've been to 20 countries. Mm -hmm. Some of those, I really got the opportunity to learn a lot about the country and the culture, and and a lot of that had to do with. Working with people and meeting them and going into their house and not just going by the beach, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> but I got to tell you, most of this, well, most of it, you don't learn enough until you've either uh, stayed there for a, a, uh, a little time or if you've gone it, gone back several yeah. times that's right that, that's a great opportunity is to go see the same thing that you've seen it before except your perspective is now a little different well i worked in europe that's a great place to learn. There as a tourist uh, i've been many many times but uh so uh i used to uh, import well, what are you cloths. trying to prove by all of this phil well what I was refuting was Renee's statement, which was most people haven't been outside the United States. And I said, oh, there's, I there's, agree with no, there's but, eight no, but, but, but uh, to begin with, to begin with, we're we're I think a little okay. more area diet than than average. This group, uh, it's not, not state. <laughs> you know, um, yeah, other some people will say, yeah, I've been to Hawaii. Uh, yeah. Before that, be it was another country. No, it wasn't. It was, it was a territory. Uh, I, th I think Phil is the oxymoron. Of that. Yeah. Yes. That test. Hey, look. Not only do I have have I traveled extensively and worked extensively in other countries for at least a month at a time, uh, I have. I'm also a diver. And I am the ultimate traveler in that I go to places where you can't even breathe without a tank on your back. And that uh, some of them are hostile environments. Uh, you know, I, I would imagine everywhere you go is a hostile environment. Oh, yeah. All right. So, well, Phil, what is the solution? <laughs> the solution is dive more. Now, or just forget everybody's religion. What do you dive for? Muff? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh. March of 2019. Excuse me, and was that a sexual up. harassing joke, Renee? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, now, March. I, I wasn't offended. I, I would just like to say, Phil, I think you're being very optimistic that the United States is still going to be in existence in 2019. Yeah. I, I may not be, yeah. but I won't be on the show that week because I'm diving with tiger sharks a in the box. SG? You had your yes. hand up? You had your hand you, you, had, you had both hands. No, up. no, no. I was just uh, doing happy hands for Phil. Oh, oh those happy hands? Oh. Okay. So I'm going to be diving with 17-foot tiger sharks out. Uh, you, we them. know we know that Phil. You told us that last yeah. night. Hey, careful Phil well, because we're, we're, uh, we're very there was somebody that just oh, got, got We're very impressed shark. and we're rooting for the sharks. Was, okay? Uh, so what well, there was a shark. Yeah, say it. If somebody, yeah, tiger shark. It was Brian. Brian was wants to say model. something. Let Brian say something. Brian. Well, I've, I was just going to say for those uh, for those who are watching, for those who are messaging, those you are privy to, Alex, who utterly despise Phil, who may <laughs> wish harm upon him by those said sharks, realize that uh, it's just as likely once they take one bite of them, they might just spit them back out again. Yeah, that's right. Well, right. They don't. They don't. Which like I wouldn't blame them. 
that one bite, that one bite is enough that you'll bleed when, out. When, that when woman are you, in when, Coco when, when are you, who got when, bit by a tiger when, shark. When, when, are you go, when, are you going, when are you going there? March of yeah. 2019. Why can't you leave now? <laughs> that's, uh, that's what my father you, always uh, used to say you, uh, to me. Eat, if you eat gold, yeah, you're going to spit it out. This is where so, I got this. Uh, yeah, actually, you know, I was in Prague this uh, about a month and a half ago. If yeah. you eat shit, you're going to spit it out. And yeah, and then so um, Prague said to me, we were in this place called the Big Boot, uh, and they said we are the number one. Uh, atheist country in the world. <laughs> so I, I don't know why they said that to me. I think they thought I was going to like proselytize. Well, wait a minute. Prague, Prague isn't a country. Prague's a city. No, uh, yeah, in the uh, Czech Republic. In the but Czech they said, Republic, we're the number yeah. one uh, atheist country in the world. In my in my in my studies that I've done, my scholarly studies I've done, I think the best porn comes out of the Czech Republic. <laughs> yeah. Maybe it's Bohemian, huh? right? No, Bohemian. It, no, it comes out. It, it, very good porn coming out. Very inventive porn comes out of the <laughs> Czech Republic. Yes. Send me a link. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, yes, uh, uh, Renee. Okay, so according to the latest statistic I can pull down for 2015, 64% of the Americans have never left the United States. And on NPR a couple weeks ago, it's like a seventy-five percent of the people uh, of the adults in the United States live within fifteen miles of their parents. That means they've gone nowhere. That must be the sixty-four percent that voted for Hillary. Sixty-eight <laughs> percent of you assholes won't leave the country. Please leave the country for your own education. Well, you know, I, I, you know something. I, well, I, 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 let me let me just say this: that when I was younger. <laughs> I had never, when I was growing up, I had never been out, left this country. It wasn't until I hit around 29 that I actually physically left this country because that was the time that my radio stamp station sent me to England to uh, find out if Paul McCartney was dead. Yeah, okay. 29 if. Yeah, and uh, that was my first trip to Europe. And I suddenly, and it was very quick, and I was had a lot of lack of sleep, so I didn't get the full effect of it. But what did amaze me was I was now somewhere where I could touch walls that were older than anything I could find in the United States outside of some maybe some Indian I, I ruins. Like, huh? You, know, you go to Oxford or you go to uh, Stonehenge and, yeah. and, and you see things that are thousands yeah. and thousands of years old. And it's it's just it's 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 so moving. By the uh, way, we are now in another country here. If you look there, uh, we're looking out the window at uh, Bree's place, and that's Dubai. Uh, Bree, did you get new uh, stainless stickers? Are they new? Uh, no, this is just a different room. Ah, got it. Different yeah. room. Oh, I just went... put them on there. And what is decoration. the plate that SG is holding up? This is holding food. There you go. What is it? What? What's oh, it's uh, China. It's China. Yeah. Anyway, uh, Christmas spode to be exact. Really, spode China. Wow. Only yeah, they make figurines and stuff like that too. Yeah. Porcelain. Porcelain. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so um, w what we're saying here is that Americans, by and large, have not left the United States. Oh, and I was saying that when I went to England, I suddenly realized that. This my my whole worldview changed. I mean, as simple as that. And it was only like a couple of days, and I came back. So I then decided, hey, I'm living here. Let me go to uh, let me go to see my friends in Spain. So I went to France, Paris for a couple of days, and then I went down to Ibiza. And all of a sudden, I realized that my whole perception of the world around me changed. Sure. You know. And so for a lot of those that 68 percent you talk about, Renee, they don't have that perception. And because they don't have that perception is the reason a guy like Donald Trump can get elected. Well, no, no, they, they don't. They choose not to have it, though. Okay. That's so it, it, it doesn't make that perception, you know, like the best perception either. I mean, we were in Prague, and we had people at our, um, the boot, the big boot in Prague, mm -hmm. people from um, uh, Russia and, and they can move around in the EU. 
very simple. Right. And that's good. That's good. And they have, a, you know, they, they don't have the same things that we have. You can't compare us who is in uh, North America on our, you know, to that. You just can't compare it. You can't say it's better or worse or whatever. It's just different. Oh, I, you know, I don't, you know, when people say to me, America is, the, we're the greatest country in the world, I go, and what do you, how how are you creating that comparison? Basketball. Well, fun. No, because <laughs> I've, been, I've been, to, uh, the I've, NBA. I've, I've been, I've been to other countries, and I got to tell you, uh, I think some of them are better than we are. In uh, be, certain respects. In, in a lot of respects. Free I mean, speech right. respect. So, well, you don't wait a minute. You don't have wait a minute. Hold on a second, Phil. You don't have free speech in England, not the way you have it here. Oh, really? If, how, how do you don't have it in 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 England? Uh, I think if you uh, 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 blaspheme the Queen or something like no, that. No, 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 no. That's how. See how much you traveled and didn't learn anything. Yes, yeah, well, Jeff. Yes, Jeff. I, I, let, let me say this. Australia. About that. Let, let me say this. In New Zealand, have any guns in Australia? Are, our uh, experience there, uh, here in Europe, Europe where we went, mm -hmm. there were uh, on the Danube 1,300 uh, boats, ships that go down there, these small ships. Yeah. And your, Europe is by and large uh, monetized through uh, tourism, okay? Not the United States. So it's, it's totally different. I'm saying there's a lot of great things about the uh, Europe and what they do and, and what they do, and it, maybe it's better than what we do in certain respects. Mm -hmm. I'm saying that it, you, you cannot say that what they do is better than what we do overall. There's no way. There's no comparison. Well, no, all I'm... No, but let's just look at the levels: you, education, healthcare, uh, going we're, to we're, their we're, we're number thir We're number 36 in healthcare. <laughs> What are we in education? Do you remember, Renee? According to who? We I mean, actually... Trump, uh, we, Trump, uh, our, Trump was... America's number one. We, we, How Trump dare was you? Number one. No. You Trump was 40. In, in health, in health, in, in health. Hillary, wait a minute. Right? Hold on, everybody. Uh, in health, I believe we were number 36, and Cuba in, is number 32, I think. Right. I think that was In great. healthcare. In healthcare, yeah. According to what? According to the World Health Organization, and and, and you know that Trump was uh, about twenty points behind Hillary in the polls. No, but this has nothing to do with what we're saying. It SG. has everything to do with it because it's 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 about how you evaluate things. No, this is evaluation based upon morbidity statistics, all of that, by an impartial yes. organization called the World Health impartial. Organization. Impartial. They just the health organization is an impartial organization. All right, so what should we do? <laughs> oh, just give all of our money to the rich people because that's exactly what we do. Yeah, because then the rich people are going to spend their you money. Wait a minute, hold on a second, that. SG. The rich people are then going to spend their money on making sure we have our health needs taken care of. Right, Renee? Absolutely. That's their <laughs> first priority. Yeah. That's exactly what they're going to do is make sure they're maids of health care and make sure their teachers have that $500 deduction they just took away. Absolutely. Who pays 70% of our taxes? Who? And those taxes are now going to go where? Who pays 70% of our taxes? Who? The top, the top 10%. Yeah, no. so? No, they don't pay 70 Yep. You're saying the what? You're saying the ten percenters pay seventy percent of taxes? Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, give me proof. Trump hasn't been doing it. Well, Trump, yeah, yeah, Trump. Trump's where, Trump's the exception. exception give, give Jeff. We're talking just Google one, it. statistics from the World Health Organization, and you're just blowing stuff out. Your no, that's not. Yeah. True. He's, he's right. He's right. Proof. He's right. Where? Tell me where. Where do I go to find it? Where, so where if, I, if, if I give that to you, will you shut up? Yeah. Fuck that's no. no. Fuck no. no. <laughs> she, she will never shut up. <laughs> All right. <laughs> she has something to say. She's going to tell you. <laughs> I know, Ray. 
uh, I'll get it. For, I'll get it for you. Hold on. Go ahead. Keep talking. Talk to amongst yourselves. Yeah. Well. Yeah. But wait a minute. But how much? Wait a minute. They pay seventy percent of the taxes, but they have over ninety percent of the money. This. I think there's a disparity there. Yes, we're number one. <laughs> we can never hope to be. We hopefully will never be number two. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. Because number one is flows much better than number two. It has to come out your ass. <laughs> I would say no, I would say we uh, would never even consider number three, but that would involve me doing an indecent act. Right, exactly. <laughs> and we don't want you doing that in your car because Is that then... one of those you're going to get some Russian girls to pee on you, and 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 Putin's going to have a. <laughs> Is that you know, <laughs> one day, one day, you know, every one of those hotel rooms in 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 Moscow have a camera in them. It's a Do known they? fact. Okay. Um. Somewhere there's a tape of Trump being pissed on, and I'm sure Putin has it, and that's why things are the way they are. Just like I'm sure some mafioso had a picture of a J. Edgar Hoover giving his male secretary a blowjob, which is why he denied the existence. Of oh, he denied the existence of the mob till his death. It doesn't yeah. exist. The mob doesn't exist. Yeah. Some, something on him, too, I'm sure. Yeah. Same, same logic. And who's same. that eating cannolis in that little club down in Little Italy, you know? You know, I, I don't know if the rest of the countries are like this, but American Christians have a different view of Christianity than Christians it's in other country. countries, all right? It's not the same view. We don't celebrate, we celebrate Christmas on the 25th of December. Most of the rest of the planet celebrates Christmas in January. I so Christians in the other countries were trying to keep their from having their heads chopped off by the uh, <laughs> uh, by the Arabs. Yeah, I think the <laughs> fact that people like to live in a bubble and they only like to hear what they want to hear. You like the United States number one, best education, best health care, best everything. And they don't have any statistics to back that up. And they don't care about the statistics because they don't care about facts. So only alternative facts. Only alternative facts. There you go. I, I don't think it bodes well for us. Half but, of humans believe in alien life. Well, okay. So do you? Yeah. Do you have and you don't believe that there's alien life out there? No. I think we're Phil's all. Alien. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. The, the alien. universe is infinite, Phil. Infinite. Yeah. So what's the possibility that somewhere in that infinite universe there is life? That's Bill's, a stretch. That's Bill's alien anyway. No, uh, no, I was born here. Oh, bull crap. Dang. Well, if we are the only living things in the universe, if we're the only sentient beings in the universe, then we're doing a pretty shitty job of taking what, care of what we have. Well, look at it this way. You know, we, we have water on this planet. Uh, how many other planets uh, that we're aware of have, uh, well, have well, quite a few? They just found water on Saturn. Yeah, they've got. We've got quite a few. Uh, they, oh, well, you're going no, bars. but they found. They you asked be, me a question, I gave you an they answer. They, 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 they found they water on Mars. Know it. Yeah, what, that, what, as, no. As, in fact, they've even like seen. Different. I think in some of, one of one of Jupiter's moons, they saw some water spouting. Uh, yeah. In one I, of SG Jupiter's is correct, moons. Correct, by the way. SG is right on that statement. What? Mars has water. It used to have water. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, hey, listen, we've uh, we've 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 run out of time uh, for this little gathering, but and yet we wonder what they found on Uranus. Uh, <laughs> no, it, 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 it's in Uranus. Toilet paper, by the way. I guess you got a rim job. There. Yes, uh, Mike. Thank you, Phil Meyer. Thank you, Jeff Stein. You Always a too, pleasure, Phil. Brian. Great having Thomas you in the car Brian. again. We we've missed you for a couple of nights. Thank you. Uh, where's Scott Boddicker these days? He hasn't been around. SG, thank you. Bree, oh, always a pleasure talking to somebody who knows what goes. You're our Mideast correspondent, okay? And Renee, thank you as well. Hey, everybody, why don't you give them a big wave goodbye, okay? And then they can, okay. That's our citizens panel. That was, that was an enthusiastic goodbye. Anyway, let me hang up on everybody here uh, in order to be able to uh, sign off the uh, Skype so that 
Uh, Jack and Amy, who are next, can use it. And then after that, it's going to be Connections uh, with uh, uh, coming to you from Florida, oddly enough. And then, uh, you know, we'll, uh, we'll be here again uh, tomorrow night. Same time. As I like to say, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye. Bye.